Tom Sijev, The Seventh Million, The Israelis, and the Holocaust. Embark on an enlightening journey through the intertwined history of Israel and the Holocaust in Tom Sijev's book, The Seventh Million. Uncover how the rise of the Nazis affected Zionists, particularly with respect to joining forces to get German Jews to Palestine. Discover the challenges faced by German Jewish immigrants, the Israeli community's reaction, and their subsequent feelings of guilt toward the Holocaust. The book provides insightful analysis of political and moral issues concerning reparations, military connections with Germany, and controversies around Holocaust commemorations. The Havara Agreement In the 1930s, the rise of Nazi Germany signaled danger for the Jewish community in Germany. The Nazis' desire for Jews to leave Germany coincided with the Zionist goal of establishing a Jewish state in Palestine. As a result, the Nazi and Zionist Jewish agency made transfer agreements known as the Havara Agreement. The agreement allowed Jews who emigrated to Palestine to take $4,000 and ship goods worth $5,000. However, the arrival of German Jews in Palestine caused chaos. Many refugees arrived against their will and were considered undesirable human material by members of the Jewish agency. The established Jewish community in Palestine was also unhappy about the flow of poor people and businessmen with their families arriving from Germany. The Holocaust and the Zionist Movement The Zionist movement offered hope to only a few thousand Jews during World War II. News of the Holocaust wasn't given priority in Jewish newspapers in Palestine until later that year. The Jewish settlers were more interested in focusing on building the state of Israel than saving European Jews. They didn't fully comprehend the magnitude of the genocide taking place in Europe as they had been victims of Jewish persecution and murder previously. The movement spent approximately several million dollars saving Jews, but much more on purchasing land and developing settlements in Palestine. Revenge and Guilt After the Holocaust After the horrors of the Holocaust became apparent, some Jewish people in Palestine called for revenge on the German people. The Nakam group planned to poison the drinking water in several West German cities with the hope of murdering six million Germans. However, this act of terrorism did not receive support from the Jewish agency as it would have hindered the establishment of the Jewish state. Additionally, many Holocaust survivors required psychological care for years after the war due to intense anxiety, nightmares, bouts of depression, fury, and apathy. Some survivors struggled to readjust to normal life and felt uncomfortable joining the collective communities of the Jewish communal settlements. These survivors wanted their own space to deal with their problems along with a sense of guilt for not doing everything they could have to save European Jews. Did Israel take German blood money? Following the establishment of the Israeli state in 1948, many Israelis demanded a boycott of Germany, but such a boycott would have been difficult and counterproductive. The Israeli government entered into negotiations with Germany in 1951 for reparations of about $820 million. Many Israelis opposed this, considering it ransom for murderers, while others believed accepting the money would aid Israel's development. In 1952, despite citizens' opposition, the Knesset agreed, and the settlement helped Israel's national product triple over a 12-year period, and approximately 15% of this growth and 45,000 jobs directly attributed to the reparations money. Over time, the payments helped forge a better relationship between Israel and Germany. Israel and Germany's Military Ties In the 1950s, Israel faced hostility from neighboring Arab countries and required military equipment, which it received from Germany. However, this connection between Israel and Germany was met with great opposition from the Israeli people due to the conflicting moral and political issues at stake. While some argued that selling arms to Germany would reinforce their commitment to Israel, others saw it as morally reprehensible to supply German soldiers with Jewish weapons. Additionally, Jewish collaboration with the Nazi state, exemplified by the case of Rudolf Kastner, sparked a huge debate as he was accused of working with the Nazis, which led to his assassination by right-wing Jewish activists. 
the controversy surrounding Israel's decision to forge military connections with Germany remained a highly contentious issue. The Trials of Adolf Eichmann In 1960, Mossad agents captured Adolf Eichmann, a notorious Nazi leader who played a key role in the killings of millions of Jews. He was put on trial the following year in Israel, which sparked both national unity and criticism. The trial was broadcasted live on the radio, creating a national group therapy for Holocaust victims. However, some criticized the actions taken in the trial, such as philosopher Hannah Arendt who saw it as a biased show trial. Despite protests, Eichmann was found guilty and sentenced to death, leaving a controversial legacy in history. Israel's Perpetual Fear Israel's fear of an Arab attack led to pursuing nuclear weapons, occupying the West Bank and Gaza Strip, and extreme racism against Arab civilians. The threat from their neighbors seemed real after the Egyptian president displayed ground-to-ground -ground missiles in Cairo. The fear of extermination grew among Israelis, who believed that losing a war to Arabs could lead to genocide. This fear culminated in the Six-Day War in 1967, where Israel captured vast territories of Palestine. The Arab civilians living in these regions were treated poorly and subjected to extreme racism in the 1980s. Rabbi Meir Kahain demanded their expulsion, and his supporters attacked Arabs. As a result, death to the Arabs became a commonly heard slogan in Israel, echoing Nazi propaganda. The pursuit of nuclear weapons was also driven by this fear, and Israel built a nuclear power plant before many other nations, constructing a nuclear weapon in the late 1960s. Remembering the Holocaust Israeli efforts to preserve the memory of the Holocaust Since Israel's early years, there has been a continuous debate on how to preserve the collective memory of the Holocaust. In 1951, the Knesset established the Holocaust and Ghetto Rebellion Memorial Day, which falls on the 27th day of Nisan, to commemorate this event. On this day, the country virtually shuts down all leisure activities and places, including movie theaters and coffee shops, remain closed. The radio broadcasts testimonials of Holocaust survivors, symposiums, and sad music, while the television stations air films about the Holocaust. Despite the nation's massive efforts to preserve this memory, teaching the Holocaust to children was still an area of concern in Israel. In the early 1980s, the country took significant steps to address this issue by making Holocaust studies a mandatory requirement in Israeli schools. Students are tested on this subject, comprising 20% of their total score on the high school diploma examination for history. The author of this book took a group of students to visit the Nazi concentration camps, including Auschwitz. The first-hand experience impacted the students profoundly, with each one breaking down at some point during the trip. The students reached Auschwitz with no tears left in them, as one of them noted. In conclusion, the book highlights Israel's efforts to remember and teach the Holocaust to the next generation. The country orchestrates an entire day of remembrance each year, and Holocaust studies have become a crucial part of Israeli education. As we make our way through the seventh million, we gain a comprehensive understanding of the complex intersections of Israeli history, the Zionist movement, and the Holocaust. We explore the agreements made by Zionist Jewish agency with the Nazis, the difficulties faced by immigrants in Palestine, and the ongoing guilt experienced by Israelis for not doing enough during the Holocaust. Furthermore, we get a glimpse into the heated debates around military connections and reparations with Germany in the post-war years. As Sijev closely examines the political and moral issues that arise around Holocaust commemorations in Israel, readers gain a profound appreciation for the nation's unique history, shaped in large part by the Holocaust.